And joining us now, she's the head coach at Georgia Tech, and now we could say officially Georgia Tech Athletics Hall of Famer. I speak of Eileen Morales joining us back here on In the Circle. How do you like that new title you just got added? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's obviously an honor to be uh, listed in that group of amazing uh, Georgia Tech athletes. So, yeah, it's kind of still a little surreal. Uh, some people in the, the building have been joking around every time they see me like, hey, Hall of Famer. And I'm like, this is just, this is weird, but no, it's, it's, it's humbling and um, just feel very fortunate to be um, inducted with some of those amazing athletes and amazing people. I remember when the news came out, cause it literally came out when uh, the last appearance you had with us. And I, I think I texted you, I teased you like, all right, so we, do we get credit for you getting inducted? Cause we talked a lot about your playing career when we had mm -hmm. you last time, but take me through that when you found out and you, you got the call that you're going to get inducted into the hall of fame. Yeah, so it's kind of, it's funny because I'm a COVID, like COVID class Hall of Famer. So like I'm the class of 2020 and uh, that we we did the celebration with the class of 2020 and, and 21. So actually, you know, learned about it a year ago. And I remember when they called, I was just really, again, humbled and uh, wasn't expecting that at all. And so just, just felt very blessed to, you know, be listed with those people. And so then it's like, you know, you go through that experience of being acknowledged they kind of um recognize you and then they tell you okay we're going to do the celebration a year later and you're like okay cool well then, you know skip forward to this year and now you actually get to enjoy it and, and really soak in you know the dinner the football game and, and um I felt like it was very uh surreal to, to go through that entire experience because I didn't really allow myself to really celebrate and enjoy it a year ago I guess because I was like oh well, we're not doing the dinner until or the the actual induction until 2021. So it was a really amazing weekend. Uh, great to see some, you know, old teammates to get inducted with Yee and then, you know, to see Perk and, and, uh, you know, a bunch of other uh, Hall of Famers who I played with uh, at Tech. So uh, yeah, I mean, it, it it's kind of cool. I guess I got a year to celebrate it. So I'm a little <laughs> bit spoiled in that, in that standpoint, but, uh, but uh, it was, was just a really amazing experience, a great weekend and um, just, just feel fortunate. Yeah, It'll give you some extra time for planning, you know, that's, that's, that's how it works out. But you mentioned yeah. Zheng Yi gets inducted because she's part mm -hmm. of the 2021 class. Just discuss what that meant to have a teammate, former teammate get inducted and maybe arguably one of the greatest, you know, oh, yeah. Yellow Jackets of all time in Zheng Yi. Oh yeah, I mean, when when she got to campus, I mean, we were like, oh, she's, she's stinking good, she's good. And I mean, she could hit, I mean, I put her up with anybody in the country. I'm one of the best hitters I've ever seen. And, and that season that she had her senior year was, was impressive beyond, beyond means. I mean, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was, it was, I don't know if there's, you know, the, the right word to say, but it just felt really fortunate. I mean, I played with some amazing players. I mean, Caitlin Lever was inducted in the hall of fame, Jesse Salinger, uh, Yi and now myself, and we were all teammates at, at, in that kind of same uh, window of time, four year window of time. So uh, it was uh, so cool to see Yi, and, and no one's more deserving. And, uh, you know, we, we were put on a two minute speech, like, which was kind of like, I felt like I was at the Grammys, like, you know, because there's so <laughs> many people getting inducted. And we were all talking about it, the, all the other uh, athletes that were getting inducted. We were like two minutes, like, oh my gosh, are we going to be able to do this? Like what? And uh, I was like, man, we're like the Grammys. And they told us they were going to start playing music once you get towards the end. And they had a clock and I was like, man, they're for real. Like, And so as you're going through thinking about who you're, you're, you're basically going to thank people and I'm going through and obviously I acknowledge ye, and, um, you know, I was able to get a little one liner in there because my sister was, was out there at, at my sister and my parents came out and. Um, I was like, you know, my sister, she's always supported me. So I always thought I was the best player in the field. I was like, but clearly I wasn't because Jenny was on my team. And so, you know, <laughs> it was, you know, teed me up nicely to be able to kind of throw that little, little line in there. But yeah, I mean, no one's more deserving. And, and honestly, I, I sat down at my table and there was um, actually two of the people, guests sitting at, the, at our table had told me this and I didn't know this, but there's only been five softball players inducted into the Georgia Tech Hall of Fame. So I was the fifth. And so that was kind of one of those things. Me and Yi were, I guess, the fourth and or fifth and sixth players inducted in. Uh, so I guess it's six. But um, I, I mean, that was kind of a really humbling moment to be like, wow, you know, there's how many people on a roster every year? 
and we've only had five or six inducted in all the years that, that we've had a program. So again, was, was just very, very uh, humbling to, and, and, and felt blessed to, to be among those people. Cause there's been some phenomenal athletes. Yeah. Ye golly. I could talk for him for hours. Well, I can sense in your voice how much this has meant to you. Uh, and, and, and ye, I mean, have you reflected on your playing career? Cause obviously you're coaching now, but it's fa- it's, it feels like you've also reflected on your playing career, I would imagine, especially hanging out with Jen Yi, uh, hanging out with Coach Perkins, who we've yeah, seen well, photos, Perkins. was there at the ceremonies as well. Yeah, it was, it's, you know, when you get together and, and the farther you get removed from playing, you know, obviously I'm still in the sport and, and, and coaching, but, you know, some of my teammates, you know, Barnes and some of the other ones that were there, uh, you know, the farther you get removed, uh, when you get back together, it's, it's, it's an amazing time. You, you just start reliving those stories. And we had a bunch of laughs. I mean, just how uh, <laughs> those, you know, the, back in the day when you, you know, were having these crazy workouts or this and that, and when you're in it, you're like, this is, ah, this is tough. But like now, you know, 10, 12 years later, 15 years later, you just laugh about it because those relationships that you built are what withstand all of that. And, and so, um, yeah, we thought we, we, we were looking back at it and perk and it was, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to have perk, you know, I've, I've still have a relationship with perk to this day. And, um, she's been somebody who's always been there for me if I have, you know, questions or need advice, whether it's coaching or life. And so for her to be there was meant a lot as well. Um, but yeah, we had a bunch of laughs and, you know, when you play for somebody uh, as a coach, you always, you know, have this level of respect for them. And as you get older in life, you build a different relationship with them. You know, they're not just, you know, a coach or a mentor. They're also somebody, you know, you would call a friend. And so to be able to be in that um, environment and that atmosphere and, um, have a couple of drinks with each other and something that you probably wouldn't have done when you're a player. Right. And, and crack up jokes and, you know, hear their perspective and our perspective on things. I was, it, it was, it was great. And yeah, I mean, we, we, we had some pretty good teams back then. I mean, when you talk about um, what we were doing uh, on the, on the flats and, and for a pretty extended period of time, and you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention coach E because uh, you know, he, 100% was the reason I, I committed to Georgia Tech. And, you know, without him, I would have never had that opportunity. But, you know, we we all have the journey and our journeys go different ways. But he's he's also been an amazing uh, part of my life as well. Coach Perkins is now back in coaching. Yeah, yes, yes. He, he, taking over at Georgia Southern. What was your reaction when you found out she was getting back to coaching? And, I mean, it's got to be so unique to have her back in coaching and in the same state. Yeah, I mean, Perks is Perks – she is a coach. She she should be in coaching. I think that's where her heart is. That's where her passion lies. And she's you know been around the game in the time that she's not been in college coaching lessons. You know all those things, um, working with travel teams. So I, I definitely uh, feel like she's earned this opportunity and this right to to get back in it. And um, was so excited for her when I heard she heard her when she was announced. Excuse me. And uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, it's funny, you know, to be back in the same state and, you know, she's, I think she'll do a great job down there. I know she will, cause she's a hell of a competitor and, uh, you know, excited kind of to see where, where that program goes now with her, um, at the helm. She teased, uh, she teased me. She's proud of what you've been doing and excited for you, but she teased that, that, you know, she's going to call you every day to set up the schedule to play. She's going after yeah. it. It's a joke, yeah, but so, look, look, look. And here's the thing, you know, t- she she had she did a hell of a job here. So you know I'm I'm still trying to get on her level with uh, her. <laughs> so I, I got a lot of I got a lot of ways to go. But um yeah we actually so this is funny um we actually are gonna be we we actually since the Hall of Fame dinner have worked this out we are gonna be playing each other in a fall game uh, here in a couple of weeks. So it, we nice. that wasn't our spring schedules were kind of already set so it was gonna be hard to like work that in the spring, but we still both had a date available for fall. So we're, we'll actually go down and play them. Um, it's going to be a neutral site game, but we're, we're putting that together um, here in the next week or so. So, yeah, so we will, it'll be, it'll be funny to be on the other side of the field uh, coaching against her. No question. I have to believe with the hall of fame weekend, with you getting inducted, with Jen Yi getting inducted, the players, your current players, they have to see that. That has to be inspirational because I know that's been part of your message of bringing that Georgia Tech tradition of success that you've been a part of as a player and as a coach when you were on Coach Perkins' staff. Do you sense that from your players? Is that something you bring up here with you being inducted and Jing Yi being inducted? 
Well, you know, we, we talk about, you know, there's people that are going to come before you, there's people going to come after you and, you know, who, where you are in this program right now, you know, you're going to be that person later on the, the alumni, or you're going to, whoever that might be, right. The mentor, the, all these things. Um, and so we had an alumni game on Sunday, which was nice to have some more players and, and people back, but yeah, I, you know, I think that, I think that it's hard. I don't try to over, you know, talk about that because I think that, you know, hall of fame and those types of accolades are a result of, you know, your team and, and your teammates as well. You know, you've got to be on a, a team that's, you know, producing at a high level as well in order for you to get those opportunities. But um, yeah, I think that we, we as a program for you to see players get inducted um, you have to see that that's even a thing before you even know that's something, right. Just like somebody being coming an all American, you have to see that people are, um, can achieve that before you even realize that that's something you can achieve. And so, yeah, there's definitely a buzz within the the team and, and the program about, you know, the, these are the standards, these are the expectations is to be competing, you know, at this, this type of level at a um, conference championship level, at the level where you're going to regionals and super regionals and, and ultimately the world series. But yeah, it was, it was, it was definitely fun. They, they were really sweet, got me a really nice card and, you know, some people had said some really nice things to me. And so it was, you know, again, I don't want to make it a big deal necessarily because, you know, I'm in that weird space where I'm their coach, but I'm also getting inducted. So, um, you know, but but they were very um, sweet and thoughtful. Uh, and, and I do. I think that, you know, your competitive players, they they want to achieve, you know, whatever that is, whatever their level of greatness is, you know, they're they're all striving for that and, and for our program to, to reach that level. What did you learn about last season's team? I know you had a lot of, obviously everybody dealt with a lot of adversity with COVID and the protocols and everything like that. But what did you learn about this, that team last year going through all that, that could, you know, going into this fall and then up to, to 2022? Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, everybody went through a ton of adversity, um, ourselves included, you know, we had a chunk of, I think 21 game, 21 days at one point where we only were able to play one game. So there was definitely a lot of like, uh, challenging times and being able to find consistency and being able to maintain consistency when you get going. Uh, but, you know, I, I think our freshmen, our underclassmen got a bunch of really good big game experience and you've got to be in those games to um, understand pressure, to understand how to perform under pressure. Uh, you know, Emma Kalf uh, had an amazing freshman COVID freshman year, whatever you want to call it, a Blake, you know, um, when, when she was healthy, had a, had a great, um, stretch there down the last month. And, uh, that's, that's some exciting stuff to build on, uh, that battery one. And then, um, you know, our infield was quality. I think, you know, our outfield, it will be all new this year, but, you know, from an infield standpoint and getting those, those innings in, and, um, like I said, in the ACC, I mean, basically we played all power five teams, except for maybe like four or five games last year. So you, you know, it was a gauntlet and it was, I think, when I looked back at it when everything was said and done, our strength of schedule was like 18. So, you know, we didn't necessarily know that that was what we were signing up for once the ACC went to four game conference series, but you know, the, we've learned and grown a lot from that. Um, I truly believe in the, that, that um, experience is invaluable, whether, you know, maybe we didn't get all the outcomes we would have liked, but the experience that our underclassmen got in that strength of schedule and that type of schedule is, is going to pay dividends for the next three years. Well, and you played some good. You won, I think, six of your last seven to finish the season, including that opening round win against Syracuse. And I've talked to many coaches that a lot of them felt like they didn't really, their team really didn't click until like the second half or late in the year because they got such a, either a late start or because of just, the, you know, just protocols and things like that. Did you feel that your team kind of learned some things about each, uh, themselves towards the end of the season they could carry over to this year? Oh, no doubt. I mean, I, I, we, out of the gate, were, we out of the gate had an extremely tough schedule and it took some time with being under, but this being younger, it took some time um, kind of for us to like recover from that. Honestly, like it was, you know, right out of the gate, you're playing um, conference wise, six game series between uh, Florida state and Clemson. And so like that took a little bit of time to kind of get over that we were in those games, but we didn't really maybe win them. And so um that again, that took some time, but as the season got on or as we worked through the season, you could see the growth and them being in similar situations that they were in February and early March, and then them, you know, producing in those same situations later on in the year. 
and uh, it, it takes time. You know, sometimes you got to go through the kind of the valleys to get to the, the highs and the lows to get there. Right. And so, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, it, I mean, Blake got a ton of great experience, great innings. Um, Emma Kalf and, you know, we've got Trish back for her um, super senior year. So, um, I mean, she batted over 400, had a phenomenal season. And so to have that um, lefty power back in the lineup as well is, is huge for our offense. You mentioned, obviously, Trisha Awold, 411, 11 homers, 31 RBIs. Emma Koff catching 345, 10 homers, 33 RBIs. was first team all ACC. What do they bring to the team that's so huge getting them back, uh, especially Emma, because with her position, not just an offensive player, but she handles the pitchers. Mm-hmm. I mean, Emma's a great leader um, on and off the field. But, yeah, I mean, the thing about her, and she's she's very unique in that, you know, she can steal she can steal bases for you, too. She can hit the ball out of the park. Our, our park is very friendly to left-handed hitters, but uh, she generates a ton of power. She's not a big she's not a big body or anything like that, but, like, she's an athlete. She's a straight-up athlete. If she's not catching, you can put her out there on defense. Um, she can play outfield for you. Uh, and so, yeah, just – her uh, demeanor, her presence, uh, her consistency, those things are, are, are those intangibles that you can't really um, necessarily uh, develop that. They've got to kind of learn that on their own. And um, so huge. And, and she's a tough, she's tough to get out. So just that bat, a lefty bat. And then obviously Trisha, who just hits for power. And I mean, a lot of people want to pitch around her. So having both of them back you know, you fit the other pieces around them. Um, but those are two huge uh, hitters for us. And, and yeah, Emma behind the plate, she does a great job managing the pitchers. Um, and just, she's a competitor. She competes every single day. And that's, that's one of the things I love about her. Who are some of the new faces and other, or even other players on the offensive side that you may think that could contribute to this team that maybe yellow jacket fans should get familiar with? Yeah. I mean, I think that like, this is um, what's really exciting about this year's, I mean, like I said, like the outfield is, you know, it's kind of a wide open competition right now. So we've got to solidify kind of how all those pieces will fit together. Uh, you know, Kennedy Cowden uh, probably is the most experienced returning out there. And, and she's uh, probably got the strongest chance of, you know, securing a spot. because She hit, I mean, she had some crazy power numbers for us um, when she was in the lineup. So definitely Cowden um, out there. And then infield wise, you know, we had Jen, um, uh, uh, Jen played short for us most of the year or for the year last year, Bailey Zeitler almost at second. We might move a couple things around there, but you'll probably have, you know, similar names on the infield. Um, and then we've got a really a quality freshman class. So um, they were ranked 17 or 18, I think um, coming in. So uh, three pitchers coming in and then um, some speed, some outfield. Uh, and I'm thinking through a couple of infielders as well. So, Really, it's we're going to look a lot different, Eric. To be honest, so you know, in the past, we've kind of lived and died by the long ball. Not we're going to hit. That's always going to be our thing. But um, we've got some more versatility offensively. We're going to um, be able to do some more things uh, running wise, uh, you know, and, and just kind of changing up um, some of our approach at the plate because I don't know if we'll hit for as much um, as many home runs maybe, but maybe more, you know, doubles, extra base hits from that standpoint. And, and then just being as aggressive on the base paths, we're going to be way more aggressive. That has been the emphasis, um, because we we're, we're to a point where we have the personnel now to do that. And when you were on last time, you talked about that, that the person, you know, the, the talent was coming in, that you were building it, building it. Do you feel now you this is the most depth that you've had on your team where you, it sounds like you have some options. You can go in a lot of different directions here. Yeah, we, I think that we definitely, this, this by far is the most depth. We were getting to that last year where we still had people who could, you know, we had depth, but I, I feel like now like people can, we, people can beat each other out. So it's, it's, it is going to be a matter of, okay, well, you know, what, what 10 people play the best together, what 10, you know, make the best lineup who, you know, um, how do all those pieces fit, uh, as a team, right? Because it's not just, are you the best shortstop? Are you the best, you know, shortstop with this infield? Are you the best, you know, 10 players out there um, to make, to put the team in the best position to be successful. But yeah, it's, um, it's, it's been fun. It's, 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 that's the cool part as a coach is when you get to that point where you're like, who, any of these people can, can do this job. Right. And, and how do we decide who, who those starters are going to be and who those role players are going to be. And because I think there's going to be a lot in our preseason 
one of the things, sorry, I'm very excited about with uh, fall is that we're getting to play other teams in fall ball. So I can try different things out, put people in different positions. How do they work together and, and see how the te- that team cohesion, um, how that comes into play. So yeah, absolutely uh, the best, uh, most depth we've had um, to date. Well, and, and you have every right to be excited. You're not the only one excited about fall ball because you didn't have that opportunity last year. You didn't get to play other teams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like, Coach, and I've seen this across the country. I've seen pro- other programs with attendance up. People are streaming games. I feel like everybody in the sport is more excited and maybe appreciates fall more than maybe they did prior to last year. Do you get a <laughs> sense of that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we had a we had an alumni game, and uh, we walked out there, and I was like, whoa, like there's like – like a decent amount of people. I mean, we probably had a hundred something people out there for this alumni. I mean, that probably doesn't seem like a lot, but I'm like, I didn't expect barely anybody to come to this. I was like, and so same thing. We were playing at South Carolina last weekend. We had a great turnout over there. Um, and, and we've got a couple of games coming up here at home the next, in the next few weeks. And I got some youth teams coming out. So, you know, I think that the buzz is, you know, there was a hunger for it last year, but you know, nobody could go right. Or the, the, there were so many limits. And so I think people are looking for things that they can go do and support. And, you know, softball is a perfect um, sport for that because you can come out there for a couple hours, come, you know, enjoy the outdoors and competitive setting, sit outside, watch a great game. And then, you know, it doesn't take your whole day to go do it. So I definitely think that um, there is that um, buzz and that energy that, you know, probably two years ago was there before pre-pandemic and you're feeling that again. And it's, it's an amazing feeling to like come to the park and there just be people wanting to come watch your fall game, right? Like a fall game and, and, and a, a good turnout for it. So yeah, we, we are beyond excited. because I think we're tired. Of, I think our players after last year, were like we're tired of uh, scrimmaging each other. We were like, we're getting over it. So it's nice to be able to mix in their games against some other competition. Let's talk about your pitching staff. You mentioned Blake, obviously, Nailerman, who's on the all ACC tournament team has created some buzz already uh, from national outlets. What makes her what 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 jumps out about her that it that has really kind of, you know, gotten people excited about her and talk about the rest of the staff? Yeah, I mean, Blake does a, does a great job of like um, her stuff's her stuff's tricky, you know, it, it, like she gets a lot of swings and misses. And so, um, you know, I put her against anybody. Anytime we put her on the mound, I feel like we have a chance to to win the ball game. Uh, you know, she works hard. She's competitive. Uh, you know, she works hard at her craft. So, uh, again, like, you know, she she had um, a little bit of inconsistency early in the season last year. But, you know, once she got going and she was on, I mean, she was throwing big innings and big games for us. And so I'm excited to see her kind of develop um, now in this next year where, you know, people do have a little bit more info on you. Right. So they're, they're able to, to, you know, you have to keep evolving as a pitcher, but um, she's, she's just got great stuff. And, you know, we love her in the circle. Love having, uh, I would love playing deep. So when we played our alumni game, she pitched for the alumni team because the alumni, we would have been like annihilated. <laughs> and uh, so she pitched for the alumni team. And so I was out there playing a little bit and they literally were like, um, I was like, oh, it's fun playing defense behind her, you know. So it was. Um, she's got great stuff and just good, good presence out there. And once the ball, if she could throw it every game, I think she would. So, um, just excited about her to see her continue to mature and, and grow um, into, you know, more of a um, returner's role, right? Where people are expecting you to, you know, be the one who gets the ball. Um, and we've got Palmer and Lexi who are um, will be seniors for us. And um, I've been really impressed with them this last fall or over the fall, just in some of the improvements they've made. Uh, you know, Palmer kind of will uh, mix speeds on you very well. And she's really like come a long way the last two years. And I think we'll use them and uh, Lexi as well a lot more than we did last year because they've, they've done some work and I'm excited for them just to see the improvements they've made. Um, we got a transfer pitcher uh, in Chandler Dennis, um, she transferred from Michigan. She's actually from North Gwinnett High School, so, you know, familiar with her and her family and have kind of a lot of connections within players on our team. And so really, really excited about Chandler as well. I think she's going to be a great addition to our staff. And uh, she's just, again, a really great teammate and um, calming presence out there. Doesn't get rattled very much. And so I think that it's going to be exciting kind of to see how all the just those four kind of fit together and then have three freshmen that um, are coming in and, um, 
one of them, Emma Mangini, is a lefty. Um, she also hits. Um, she played for Fury Platinum. Uh, so, you know, again, trying to work those freshmen in and get them opportunities um, and uh, depending on what the matchup is. But she's nice lefty southpaw, you know, slinging it in there. So excited about her. Uh, Kenzie Norton, who throws a little bit more down the zone. Um, she's another Georgia kid from Etowah. She actually played for the Bullets and then the Wichita Mustangs this last summer. And Sophia Boyles, uh, who is also from Georgia, uh, kind of north up there towards Chattanooga. So, yeah, uh, and she played for the Bullets this past summer. So we're excited about them because they all have different stuff. And so, again, like trying to create a pitching staff so that we have opportunities to mix and match. And um, when you're playing a three-game series, so the opponents aren't always seeing the same thing, right? No question. Uh, and yeah. You mentioned that you had the 18th strongest schedule in mm -hmm. the country in 2020 a part of big part of that was the acc and i think it closed yeah. florida state played for the national championship yeah. was yeah. a win away you had clemson had the mo monster year duke got was a national seed just talk mm -hmm. about the growth of this acc which is uh, it topped it grows bigger and bigger every year keeps getting better and better probably better than back when you even you were playing days oh yeah oh yeah i mean it's there's no there's no easy series there's no easy games i mean uh, you, you talk about Virginia Tech, what Pete's done over there. You talk about Florida State, um, Coach uh, Rittman at Clemson in such a short period of time, and Marissa at Duke. I mean, they. I mean, you can tell the programs that have invested in in their um, softball and um, that how that trajectory can happen quicker the, the more that investment is. But um, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's fun though too. Like right, like you want like to me like I want to play the best of the best, right? Like so um and iron sharpens iron so like as our conference gets better you know that that makes everybody around that makes everybody in the conference stronger that makes us a better makes our programs and our teams better when you go to postseason and you're more prepared if you get sent to an sec team or a pac-12 team or whatever the heck uh for a regional because you've already went through the gauntlet in regular season right you've already seen these elite arms and you're getting you're getting great arms every friday saturday sunday like there's not really a a game off with that. So yeah, really proud of the conference. And that's been, you know, since I've gotten here, that's been one of the things that constantly in our head coaches meetings was the focus is how can we make our conference stronger, whether it's scheduling, whether it's this, whether it's that, just continuing to push for the ACC because this conference is a conference of national champions. I mean, not just in softball and in, in basketball and football and, and all these different sports. And that's how it should be for softball as well. And, you know, Florida state knocking on the door, Back in 2018 was huge uh, for us uh, as a conference. So you could see, and so that administrators and all of those things could see that, yeah, it is achievable for softball. And let's continue to invest in these programs so that they can build, um, you know, facilities and programs and have the support to compete against what you're competing with in your backyard, which is you're recruiting against the SEC if you're in my area and your Florida State's area, if you're in all these areas. And so you've got to be able to have the investment um, financially in order to make those steps, right? But I'm excited for sure just to see how well the, um, the conference has been doing and the ACC network for sure um, plays a huge role in that as well. No doubt. I mean, ACC network, people can watch your team play like uh, uh, often there, either on the, on the TV or even on the stream on ACC Network Extra. That's a big boost now. It's part of the explosion of the popularity of softball is that people can uh, uh, watch whatever softball they want to see, and the ACC is at the top of that list. Oh, yeah. I mean, I literally, like, it, it's funny because I, I I am a huge Georgia Tech volleyball fan. Like, they are killing it. They're, like, ranked 12th right now in the yeah. country. Or 60, I don't even know. It's, like, something insane. Like, and last year, I couldn't really go to the games, their matches and stuff, but, like, I'm telling you, if I can't go, I'm on the ACC network, like watching their stuff on the stream or on TV. And it's just what the network has done for, um, you know, non-revenue sports, whatever you want to call them. But for our, our Olympic sports, our volleyballs, our, you know, softballs, our, all, I mean, it, it's been huge. And, um, you know, anytime that we have a game on on the network, you know, Georgia Tech, like we put on a full production. Like you got the four camera is like it's literally like a. a watching a ESPN game um, on, on TV, whether it's uh, direct or not. So, or whether it's a, whatever, I can't remember what the right term is for it, but yeah, it's, it's, it's huge and, and has definitely helped our programs uh, gain recognition across the country with, with the, the, the network.
I know. I wish they would have had this when you were playing. Then people, people <laughs> yeah, would have watched you play. My little streams, yeah. <laughs> uh, if- la- you know, what are you going to do, you know? Uh, last thing, obviously, as you continue through this fall and you learn the team and you figure things out, and then you, before you know it, you get to February. What are some of the keys for this group to, to do to accomplish your internal goals? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the biggest thing is always, you know, you've got to understand that it's a team first and, you know, everybody has to understand their role, whatever their role might be. But um, we're always going to be about what's putting the team in the best position to be successful. You know, I think pitching wise, um, if we make some improvements in the circle, which, you know, if, if our stats, you looked at our stats and stuff, you could see that that was an area that was inconsistent, but just um, reducing our ERA and things like that. Um, will allow the offense to kind of relax and not have to, you know, maybe have to produce as many runs. Um, And so I think taking care of, you know, what's going on in the circle as well as um, solidifying our defense, um, that's going to allow an offensive standpoint you to kind of be able to, maybe you don't have to score eight runs to win. Maybe you only got to score five, right? That'd be, that's a lot less pressure um, for the hitters. Uh, So I think that the big piece starts, it always starts in the circle in my opinion. And so, Um, being consistent there will um, clean up a lot of things. And then just, again, I think uh, (laughs) figuring out which pieces need to to go where. So there's a little bit of a roundabout answer there because we're still so early in our fall, but, but that's kind of the key piece for me is I think that if you can pitch well and play good defense, it it allows you your offense to, to have some days off and still be able to win games. Well, we, we look forward to seeing your team on the field, but uh, in the meantime, it's already been an exciting fall at Georgia Tech with you being inducted into the Hall of Fame and Jen Yi being inducted to the Hall of Fame. Congratulations on that once again. Well-deserved on the honor. Uh, and thank you for taking the time. I know it's a busy time. We wish you well uh, this upcoming season, and uh, we'll talk soon. Awesome. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you having me.